Hey everyone, this is the second video in the c -sharp best practices video series. In this video, I have brought you some new best practices which everyone should try to follow when they are programming in the c -sharp language. If you know about them, then it should be a good revision for all of you. But if you don't, then it will obviously be a good learning opportunity. Alright, so without wasting any more time, let's get on to the first one. The first one is a class should not be connected with too many other classes. So this is an important one because a class should try to stick to single responsibility principle and should not contain too much diversified programming logic. This also means that the class should not refer to too many other class objects like it is being done over here in this example. The my class over here has three methods which are connected to different class types. So what will happen is whenever there is a change in any one of these classes then this entire my class or at least the part of the functionality which is actually referring to the class type which is being changed will need to be tested. If multiple classes are being changed then all of these methods which are using those classes will need to be tested to make sure nothing is broken after the last change. This simply means that if a class has so many connections to other classes then it becomes increasingly harder to test the code base whenever a change takes place. For instance, when any change or fix occurs in a class code then ideally all the connected code logic needs to be tested. This is a big overhead when client deliveries are tight and when production issues are being fixed. That's why it is always a good idea to limit the amount of functionality for any class to a single one or maybe a limited amount of business logic so that we don't have to worry about the integrity and consistency of the class code when any external change is done. The second one is assign default values to variables. This is important because they can have an invalid value instead of having a valid default value before they are used. In this example, this integer value is being set with a non-default value or a system value its value is being changed in a condition and then it is being written to the console but you can see that if this condition is not executed then the value which is being printed to the console is still the system value to avoid this what we can do is we can set an initial default value which will be valid in case this condition is not executed for example we can set another value to it which will still remain valid even though this argument is not having a value which will prompt this code to set a correct value or a value which is other than the default value to this value one variable. Also the initial assignment can be left empty when the field is set later after some other piece of code is executed. For example if there is an else part over here which is setting some other value to this value one variable like value one equals to 10 then we don't really need this initial assignment also because a valid value is being set to this variable no matter what all right so the third one is maintain consistency in using curly braces with if statements so this should be fairly obvious that if you are not using curly braces in a single lined if statement but there are multiple lines of code for else or else if part then you must use curly braces for that single line if statement too. As an example, you can see that this if statement is single lined and there are no curly braces because this is allowed. But this else part has multiple lines of code which needs to be executed. So we are bound to use these curly braces. But the problem over here is we are using curly braces in the else part but not in the if part. Sometimes when there are too many lines of code, then it becomes increasingly harder to understand the code by looking at it in a single glance. Like if these two blocks of code are even connected to each other or not because one block is having the curly braces and another one is not. To rectify this situation, we can simply add the curly braces for the if statement too. And then consistency is maintained in this scenario. This makes it easier to understand the code and will avoid any kind of confusion as to what code will do what. I personally always use curly braces because eventually 
it becomes a habit and if you are working in a team setting then everyone will have an easy time understanding your code so that was it for this video guys do let me know what you think about it and if you have any questions or suggestions then feel free to use the comments area also if you think that this video is helpful for you then please don't be shy and place a like and also subscribe to this channel so that you will be the first to know when new videos will come out i'll be back with the next part of this video and i will see you in the next one till then have a great day